Exotic animals, they range from birds, fish, ferrets, rats and mice, reptiles, and even pet rocks. To even some people having tigers or bears and other dangerous wildlife as pets. There's a lot of controversy surrounding the subject about exotic pets. So, should people keep exotic animals as pets? Honestly, I have mixed feelings about the subject. On one side, I say go for it, go crazy, go get yourself an exotic pet. But on the other side, I say no. Don't you dare touch one, you're going to risk its life. First, let me define the term exotic. Exotic, according to Google, is originating or in characteristic of a distant foreign country or in its noun form, an exotic plant or animal. There are many animals that you might not even know that have been considered exotic animals because you see them in your neighborhood pet stores. Now back to the topic at hand. I will start with my no side. My first point is that uneducated owners usually neglect their exotic animals by not giving them the right living conditions. And an example of this is when reptiles live in sand. For some reptiles, they can get sand impaction, which is an animal. When an animal eats or licks sand, that later clumps up in their digestive system, which can kill them. There is a video by an awesome person named Leopard Gecko Talks on YouTube, which is about sand impaction called Sand Impaction and Leopard Geckos. I will be using some of her points and image she used in her video. In her video, she was talking about when you get sand and you add water, the sand clumps together. It is the same, but in a leopard gecko stomach, that can kill them, as well as the reptiles. Also, calcium sand is the most dangerous that you can get for your reptile, and plant sand slash toy box sand is not that dangerous, but you wouldn't want to risk your pet's life. Also, uneducated leopard gecko owners usually get sand because they think, oh, a leopard gecko must live in the desert, I see them in this package and they live in the desert so let's get sand so I can feel right at home but in reality leopard geckos are found in southeastern eastern Afghanistan western Asia Pakistan Iraq and Iran where it is very rocky and very little trees but they can get a little bit of sand and that's like a thing that wild animals get but it wouldn't be a substantial amount that would actually kill them now I'm going to show an image of a leopard gecko x-ray and the white blob in his stomach is sand. Now I have this image that is about a dissected leopard gecko with sand impaction. So if you dislike dead animals or blood and guts and stuff coming out of an animal's stomach, please, 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 please look away. It will make you feel sick. And another Example of neglect is when animals who require large tanks or cages are put in a small cage with no room to walk or fly. The second point is I'm going to make is that when uneducated owners do not know about the exotic pet laws where they live. In Florida, there are three categories for exotic possession permit. Let's begin at the bottom, class 3 wildlife. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, the animals that require a permit for class 3 wildlife are parrots, finches, skunks, foxes, geckos, snakes, and frogs. And animals such as foxes, skunks, and deer taken from the wild are not permitted to be called a personal pet and is illegal. Class 3 wildlife require a permit which you may get when you are 16 years old. Class 2 wildlife are animals that pose a threat to humans. An example of the animals are African hunting dogs, bobcats, honey badgers, giraffes, and ostriches. They require substantial experience and cage requirements must be met. Class 1 wildlife are animals that are extremely dangerous to humans and require a substantial amount of experience and cage requirements must be met. Examples of these animals are baboons, bears, crocodiles, slash alligators, and tigers. But there is hope for people who want to get a pet without a permit, and they're exotic, like button quails, canaries, chinchillas, cockatiels, doves, ringed, ruddy, and diamond, ferrets, 
domesticated and European finches, gerbils, and hedgehogs, guinea pigs, hamsters, honey possum, and sugar gliders, love birds, moles, and shrews, mina birds, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, parrots, prairie dogs, rabbits, rats and mice, reptiles or amphibian, non venomous unprotected species that are not listed as endangered, threatened, species of special concern, conditional reptiles or otherwise regulated, shell parakeets, squirrels and chipmunks, and toucans. But this is only in Florida. Other states and countries have their own rules on exotic animals, so do your research. If you want a specific animal that requires a permit and you do not have that permit, you can't get that anim animal, which sucks. On the con contrary, in my go get an exotic pet side, people should get an exotic pet because it's a unique learning experience. People can learn what the pet's favorite food is or how the animal acts like daily. As well, people who can't have furry animals or animals with feathers, there are other animals like reptiles and they can still get them without allergies. Also, some animals like hamsters do not require very large cages and can live in apartments. But Mocha, what about people dumping animals in the Everglades? Well, random person, you are lucky because I am going to talk about that right now. In Florida, people dump their snakes and other exotic pets into the Everglades. Some people can't even take care of them because they become too big or had to move into their new house that does not allow animals. And it breaks the food chain that has been existing before. The animals that are dumped in the Everglades eat the predators or a lot of the prey. But how can we stop this? But in Florida, the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has an amnesty, amnesty day, which is a day when people can, who can't keep their exotic pets and surrender them and the animals get checked by a veterinarian. If the animal is healthy, they could, they'd be put back to adoption and they can be found a new forever home. That sounds great, but when's it next time they have this event? The next time they have this event is in January 13, 2018, which is at the Naples Zoo at Caribbean Gardens, 1590 Goodlet Franklin Road, Naples, Florida, 34102. People who want to surrender their exotic pets should arrive at 10 a.m. through 2 p.m. And people who want to adopt the animals should arrive at 2.15 p.m. to check in, but the event to adopt starts at 2.30. Let's go on my fine. In conclusion, people should do research before getting an exotic pet. It can reduce the neglect of animals and lead to more happy owners. Thank you for watching and bye.